I'm going to tell you three, maybe four things that Google could do right now in order to sell even more pixels than they've already sold, which is probably going to be one of the best selling pixels, if not the best selling pixels ever. But yet again, they're still leaving some money on the table as it relates to getting the pixels sold even more. What's up everybody, this is Scott. Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be discussing how I think Google can do these three or four things and do them really, really well. Um, and this is actually thanks to a video that I watched from Travis MCP. He said a lot of great things and I'm gonna reference that video a few times because he inspired me to talk about this even more. I had thought about making a video like this because when I was at CES, I actually saw more Google Pixels in the wild than I had ever seen before in my entire life. Uh, ironically enough, they were the Pixel 6 Pro and not necessarily the Pixel 6. And these were not just individuals that went to CES as tech YouTubers either. They were not members of the media or anything like that. They just happened to be regular CES attendees, which I thought was really, really awesome to see so many pixels in the wild. For the first time ever, I felt like I wasn't on an only little island, which was kind of dope. One of the first things that Google has to do in order to sell the pixels even more is let's get these software updates under control. The December software update was an absolute disaster, um, and it still continues to kind of plot along and be that thorn in the side for Google as it relates to updates. Now, I recently just went through the January update, so at the time of recording this video, I went through the January update, and now my Pixel 6 Pro is on the January update. I don't know if that means they stripped out the December feature drops. My guess is the 40 megabyte file probably didn't strip everything. And so far, fingers crossed, everything is running pretty well so far on my Pixel 6 Pro. But one of the first things that they have to do is to get those software updates under control. And that includes getting those specific Pixel feature drops in the hands of other Pixel users. And that gets me to kind of the next thing that they need to talk about. They need to specifically talk about and market even more the specific Pixel features that you have out there that really could make you stand differently in comparison to other Android phones. Travis MCP said it best. He said, if Apple were to have some of the features that the Pixel 6 Pro has, they would be screaming it from the mountaintops. However, Google has really stopped marketing their phones as much as they did in the fall of 2021. I would like to see Google and Google could continue to sell even more phones if they talked about those specific features that they had available on all the phones and actually marketed them in the commercial everywhere. I'm seeing still some Google commercials, but I'm not seeing nearly as many Google commercials. And I think Google has an opportunity right now to take some market share, you know, go from the two, two and a half percent market share to the five, six and a half percent market share. If they were to continue to absolutely market, market, market their phones, and then talk about the features they have specifically. Like if you think about the call screen feature, that alone might get individuals to come over to the pixel line specifically because of the ability not to get spam calls or to get less spam calls or know when you're getting a spam call specifically for you. I don't use things like direct my call or hold too much or hold for me very much, but I use the spam calling option all the time. It absolutely is a golden feature. And again, much to Travis's point, Apple had something like this. They would be screaming it from the mountaintop. I mentioned things like getting the marketing under control like you did in the fall, absolutely doing things and talking about it more so. Again, dumping more money into the marketing of the phone. It seemed to work in the fall. Again, I mentioned before in CES, I saw more pixels in the wild than I had ever seen before. So the marketing was definitely working. Getting the software under control, getting those specific feature drops, very specific specific pixel feature drops, really enticing individuals to come over to the pixel line. And the third and final thing, and really one of the more important things right now is pricing and carrier deals that are available out there. Again, in the fall time, you were doing great carrier trade-in deals where you could trade in an older device and get somewhere between $700 and $900, depending on your carrier. But right now, if I go to AT&T, I don't have the option of any type of crazy trade-in for a Google Pixel, but I definitely see some for Samsung and I definitely see some for Apple. I can get upwards right now of a trade-in of an older device and get up to $800 off for a Samsung or an Apple device at AT&T right now. The best I can get right now from a pixel, $200, 200 buck. Now, while that's not bad, if I'm a person who wants to try to save the same amount of money, or if I'm a person who wants to try to save a massive amount of money and you put 
either an Apple, a Samsung, or a Pixel in front of me, and you say, these two give me $800 off, and this one gives me $200 off, and you have no brand loyalty at all, which one are you going to pick? You're definitely going to pick either the Apple or the Samsung. It really just depends if you want to be in the Apple ecosystem or if you want to be in the Android ecosystem. The thing is, most people care about the price. And right now, from a carrier deal perspective, at least at AT AT&T, I only get $200 off of a Pixel and I can get $800 off of either an Apple or a Samsung device. That's pretty easy choice in my personal opinion. On top of that, with the S21 FE coming in at $699 and the Pixel 6 Pro coming in at $599, I think you could actually lessen the price, even though the prices are great on the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, I think you could lessen the price on the Pixel 6 and the Pixel 6 Pro, bring the Pixel 6 Pro down from $899, bring it down to like $799, bring the Pixel 6 Pro from $599 to $499 and really undercut those same things and then offer carrier deals on top of that. And I really think that you could grab a tremendous amount of market share. So Cut the deals with the carriers, cut the price by a hundred bucks, which would entice individuals to get it, and then talk about it from a marketing perspective. You know that the software is great. Outside of the December release from a pixel drop perspective, more often than not, Google nails it from a software perspective. But these are the times where you should be marketing, 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 and I'm just not seeing that. You're missing out on a lot of money right now, Google, because what you could be doing is talking about the phone, talking about the specific features that why you should choose a pixel, and then getting the carrier deals in store and making people choose. This is why I would choose to do and buy a Pixel versus something like a Samsung or an Apple device. So that's it. That's all I have. This was just a quick video of what I think Google can do to grab some market share. And as always, like, share, subscribe, thumbs up, leave a comment below. We'll see you next time.